When I was younger, I once asked my grandmother how she felt about my mother, who was Mexican, bringing home my black father to meet her. She lovingly replied, Mijo, I don't like black people, but your father's different. He's not like those other blacks. This confused me, considering I'm a half black as well. When I reminded her of this, her answer is one that I hear every time I discuss my race with others. Pero mi dulce, you're not even really black. In the United States, a person's character is defined by the color of their skin. As a child, I was always trying to navigate the different qualities of myself to better understand where I was supposed to fit in and how to best do that. This segmentation of self came from the exposure to both sides of my family. My father's side would often have discourses on how Mexicans were stealing jobs from Americans or contributing to the downfall of America. My mother's side would do the same, but she would say things like, blacks are criminals or unemployed thugs. So by their logic, I was an unemployed thug stealing jobs from Americans. As I got older, I stopped asking myself how I was different and being black and Mexican were separate and started to see how it came together and intersected. Before I came to Lebanon, I thought that racism wouldn't be as pervasive as it is in the United States due to our sociological makeup and our biases rooted in our collective history, acts of violence, and a shared, I guess, ideology about the other. As I've, as I've been here, though, I've seen that racism isn't confined to borders like countries drawn on a map. Many of the things I would hear resonated with me, because these are the same types of stereotypes and ideologies got directed towards Syrians as were directed towards blacks and Mexicans in the US. I hear things like, Syrians are stealing jobs from the Lebanese, or since the Syrians arrived, the crime rate has gone up. Essentially, Syrians are the blacks and Mexicans of the Middle East. I believe that since I was new to the region and had the advantage of objectivity, I can, conduct, I can conduct a survey to answer my own questions of ethnic and racial relations here that could be applied to the US and throughout the world. Although there have been studies related to living conditions, economic insecurity, and the treatment of Syrian refugees as it pertains to the government, there hasn't been an in-depth study as per the citizen or the non-citizen population. <coughs> the question of how polarization occurs within the confines of the Lebanese government is just as important as it formulates within the community. The questions I asked respondents range from demographics to a relig religious affiliation to their ideologies about the other. What I discovered was alarming, but not because there is blatant discrimination against one certain group or individual, but rather that the discrimination that one feels is often based in non-empirical facts, and the questions and the answers often change when I ask about a group member or an individual. Um, so three of the most pertinent questions I asked were Syrian nationals, what do you believe your Lebanese friend wants for you here in Lebanon? And I asked the Lebanese nationals, what do you believe your Syrian friend wants for you in Lebanon? And as you can see, when I ask the questions about their friend or about the group, it often changes. I think the most drastic and probably stark difference is if they want Syrians to be deported. Um, it went from 62% from Syrian nationals to 2%. Um, the next question I asked, was, do you believe that the Lebanese government or the Lebanese people have a problem with Syrians living in Lebanon? I asked Lebanese nationals, do you believe that you have a problem with Syrians or does the Lebanese government? In most cases, when I asked the group, the answer was the Lebanese people. But when I asked them about their friend, the answer changed to the Lebanese government. The final, one of the final questions I asked was the third question, which is, what do you believe that Lebanese want for Syrians living in Lebanon? And I asked Lebanese people, what do you want for Syrians living in Lebanon? So when I asked the group members, it was usually that they, they thought that Lebanese people wanted the Syrians deported. But when I asked the Lebanese, they usually gave me the answer that they wanted Syrians to be granted citizenship, or not citizenship, but rather um, refugee status and were able to stay. The most interesting thing I discovered during my studies was not that everyone in the world is racist, but rather that everyone in the world has the capacity to be tolerant. Most people think that racism is easily identified, but racism isn't always overt. It can come packaged as a reinforced joke or a stereotype, and its many forms are subversive and permeate through every society, from the West to the East, from America to Lebanon. This is because race is a construct of the human mind 
often finding its basis rooted in un unscientific, unscientific, reactionary, and unempirical frameworks. This brings me to a quest I have for everyone in attendance, a blueprint of how to change the collective perspective by way of the individual. The first is to engage in open dialogue. This can range about what was discussed during today, or to have a conversation in the privacy of your own home. But to not have a conversation is to leave things open to ignorance. And maybe ignorance isn't always bliss. The second is to question. Question why you believe the things that you do. Question how the ideologies about the other came into fruition. Question why you feel as though you're different than the other. Question the credence in your mind that you've created about the other. And above all, while you question the other, question yourself. The third and perhaps easiest and hardest part is to focus on your similarities and not your differences. See how you come together and intersect. So the first is to engage in open dialogue, question the questionable, and see how you intersect. If you're feeling overwhelmed or don't know where to start, you can start with the person sitting next to you. You can start with the Lebanese that you're close with. You can start with a friend or a family member. If push comes to shove, you can always start with the person that's Syrian, but not really. <laughs>